Welcome to University Presbyterian Church. Uh, I am Pastor Tim. I'm pastor here at UPC. If you have any questions about how we're doing, what we're doing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, please don't hesitate to come ask me and talk to me. Good morning to those online and joining us on Zoom and YouTube. We're glad you are here and joining us uh, also. Um, Really, uh, if, you're, if you have any questions on Zoom or YouTube, please go ahead and put those in the chat. We have several hosts in there, um, but anything that needs to go to me will end up with me. So uh, it is good seeing you too. Um, want to note, um, hey choir, there's other people here. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so we are back uh, in doing hybrid. Uh, you'll notice uh, we've asked you to wear masks. We're going to do uh, like we were doing before. Please hum the songs if you were joining us in person, um, except for the last song. We'll sing that all together. We will be, joining, we'll be uh, gathering for fellowship out on the patio uh, for those in person. And for those online, we'll continue to do everything we have been doing, which is uh, doing fellowship online, um, and doing back and forth and everything the way we have. So this, that is not going away just because we are back here uh, together. <clears throat> um, and do, do watch your Wednesday email uh, just in case there are any changes. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be going back to just online anytime soon. Um, but, you know, it's, it's still a, a very fluid uh, world and situation that we are in. So do watch those Wednesday emails. Finally, I want to thank all those who came out yesterday uh, to pass out our little flyers um, and, and get everyone uh, around us to know that we are having um, vaccinations and boosters here at church tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. Um, if you've never heard about this, let me tell you about this. You should come out. If you need a booster, if you need a vaccination, you just have to show up with your ID. If you have any insurance, please come bringing that. We are not a COVID testing station, so uh, if you are thinking that you have COVID, hopefully you are, one, not here, uh, and two, that you should not come to UPC expecting to be able to get a test. Um, it is free for anyone. Um, there are some extras that we have out on the table back over here for those in person. Uh, you can grab those and spread those throughout your own neighborhood too. Um, secondarily, it was really good to go and be seen by our community. Uh, I know that my wife and, and my family, we, we met several people and folks who, who knew about UPC. They talked about what amazing, thing our, amazing things our community does, our church does for their community, um, and we want to keep doing that. So uh, this is not the, the first time and only time we're going to be walking around this community. Uh, do watch those Wednesday emails for the next time uh, we get out there and say hello. Finally, our, uh, our liturgist this morning is Cleveland Atkinson. And so, Cleveland. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to be here again. In case you can't tell how excited we were, we want to welcome everybody to the service today. We're really happy to be in person, and a special hello to all my Zoom friends out there and to those of you on YouTube. We are delighted that you are with us today. You matter. Um, for prayer requests today, those of you on Zoom, please use the chat feature to send yours before the passing of the peace. And for those in person, there are notebooks spread out throughout the, the room here for your use. Um, immediately following the service today, I'm going to reiterate what Tim said. There will be fellowship on the patio for those of us here. We encourage those of you on Zoom to stick around after the benediction, and you will be assigned to a small group for fellowship. Um, again, just a, another reminder about the vaccine, um, the COVID vaccine tomorrow. The van will be in the parking lot at church. If you have any questions, call the church office. And now let us take a look at what our family's been doing this week, our UPC family.
Wherever you are, bring your blessed body to worship. That allows you to embrace another. If you feel complex or content in your body, come. Let us welcome the spirit living and breathing in our every being. Now we will sing, hum the hymn, God of Every Nation. Please stand. digital means and through the very air that separates us. But friends, we have also come as a people unable to make things right on our own. As a people who are broken and un un unable to fix ourselves. And yet it is with these broken lives that we come to the most holy of holies, God our Lord, and that God embraces us as we are. And so, friends, in humility, faith, and trust, confessing our need for this God and this embrace, please join me in our confession, which is found on your screens. <clears throat> Lord God, we come with doubts and concerns, pride and little self-respect. We confess that we have not been listening we confess that we have not taken your teachings to heart. We confess that we have found ourselves too weak to lean on your power and instead have instituted our own. We have made enemies just so we can hate. We have forgotten what forgiveness looks like. Forgive us, Lord. Remind us of your grace that we would not just simply follow rules or listen to teachings. May your presence transform us so that we would reflect your grace inside and out. Friends, individually and in silence, let's go to God in prayer.
Amen. I'm using the responses again found on your screen and beginning together. Our God is a God of grace and mercy and love. We know that our sins have been forgiven. May we be strengthened in all goodness since we have been raised with Christ. Let us seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and together, thanks be to God. Amen. And so, friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And now, friends, let us go online, turn on gallery view, unmute yourselves, say hi, pass that peace, and together here, let us pass that peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Peace to everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Linda. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Sandy and Timmy. Peace be with you, Peace be with you, Marjorie. Peace be with you, Steve and Jerry. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Sebastian. Peace be with you, Esther. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Callie. Peace be with you, Carlton. Peace be with you, Hi. Peace be with you, Dad. Peace be with you, Ona. Peace be with you, Ted. Peace. Peace to all. Thanks, Dad. Peace, Peace to you, to you Dad. Peace be with you, Flo. Thank you. Peace to you, Joe. Hi, Flo. Hi, Maud. Nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. Steve, Peace you're God. looking good. Thank you. So friends, let us continue our worship. Let us be prepared to hear God's word in sermon, scripture, and in song. Friends, let us pray. Lord God, send your spirit that our eyes, our ears, our minds, and our hearts would be open to the working of your hands that we would be reformed into the image of your love. We give you thanks. Amen. Our first reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in a, sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spirit that is first, but, it is, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was the man of dust. So are those who are of the dust. And as, the man, and as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of a man of dust, so we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, siblings, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable.
6, verses 27 through 38. It's a continuation of our reading from last week, continuation of the Sermon on the Plain from Luke. But I say to you, Jesus says, but I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even, even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who, who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, but receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the grateful, to the ungrateful, and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, Shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you give back. Let us pray. Lord God, our rock and our redeemer, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing unto you. Amen. Strange Fruit. A song written by Abel Mirapol in 1937. First performed by Billie Holiday, Holiday, although I prefer Nina Simone's rendition. I should note, when I say prefer, I don't mean enjoy the song. 
but instead it is a song of great lament and grief. First lines go as such. Southern trees bearing strange fruit. Blood on the leaves and blood at the roots. Black bodies swing in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. If you've never heard this song, its lyrics may surprise you. They describe scenes of the hanging of black Americans in the Jim Crow South not even a hundred years ago. Why do I bring this up today when Jesus speaks of praying for others, loving our enemies, giving and receiving? I bring this up today because of Jesus' command to do good. When the song was written, its subjects were being killed in parks and on sides of roads in this nation. The communities perpetrating these murders, these acts of horrendous and inexcusable violence, they thought they were doing good. They were protecting their whiteness they were proclaiming their supremacy, which was to do good for those they believed to be human, their, their friends, their fellow white neighbors, and to deny the humanity of their fellow black neighbors. Isolated. From the rest of the text, these lines that Jesus speaks can be twisted and, be, and have been twisted out of context and out of truth so they can better reflect the desires of abusers. Colonists and the church believed they were doing good by forcing Native Americans to forget their cultures or die because their cultures weren't civilized. Folks who are in abusive relationships are told to forgive their abusers and to stay in abusive relationships because Jesus says to turn the other cheek. From the point of view of those who are abused, this doesn't seem to be good. It is not good. How can murdering black neighbors be good? How can wiping entire, uh, entire Native American peoples off the face of the earth be good? How can keeping the abused in abuse be good? It isn't. It's a misunderstanding and twisting of what Jesus is teaching here. So then what is good? I'll skip right to Jesus' intention here of what he's trying and expecting to teach. It lies with verse 36, with Jesus speaking about God. He says, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. This is more than just a teaching about mercy. It's about where all of what Jesus is talking about comes from. Let's go back to Jesus' introduction to this scripture, what we read last week. Blessed are the poor, woe to the rich. Jesus is proclaiming a community and the advent of that community in which we are not divided into the haves and the have-nots. Instead, we are all cared for and loved for we all are children of God equal, liberated, and enjoyed as children of God. Our readings then should be taken as, as ethical teachings 
given this vision and proclamation, if we, if we were proclaiming this vision of, of equitable love and compassion for all people, then, then how can we do that in our actions? Not just in our words. For Jesus, this means emulating and acting according to how God interacts with us. And particularly through God's grace. We deny God's divinity all the time from taking on false gods like money or power to rejecting the familial bonds between us. And yet God forgives. God's grace overcomes all and God welcomes us again with open arms. So when someone slaps you, forgive. When someone steals, forgive. When someone is unjust, forgive. But then I'll go ahead and give voice to the voice in the back of many of our heads saying that is impossible. I don't think I can do that, Tim. And indeed, we cannot be the divine. We can't be God. Our patience is nothing in comparison to the patience of God. Of course, Jesus doesn't say forgive, turn the cheek, is what he says. Give our shirt is what he says. Lend without expectation of anything back. Loan without interest. In each of these situations, there is a power difference. The one who slaps asserts their power of violence over the other. The one who steals asserts their power through deceit. The lender has power over the borrower. In each of these teachings, there is an opportunity for the systems of inequality to be continued. Some on top, and some on the bottom. Some with, and some without. And in each of these teachings, it isn't just about forgiveness, it's about resisting the continuation of those systems. Resisting the cycles of violence, resisting the cycles of poverty. To do good in this perspective is to assert the truth of God. To do good proclaims that these cycles of power over others and disempowerment of others are lies. Therefore, God, good Therefore, good cannot be that some are lesser than others. It cannot be to deny self-determination. It cannot be the continuation of dehumanization. The theologian James Cone comments on the continuation of racist policies and traditions in comparison to the work of reconciliation in our nation saying, indeed, our survival and liberation depend on, upon our recognition of the truth when it is spoken and lived by the people. If we cannot recognize the truth, then it cannot liberate us from untruth. To know the truth is to appropriate it, for it is not mainly reflection and theory. Truth is divine action entering our lives and creating the human action of liberation. Liberation. That is the vision of the gospel that Jesus lays out in his Sermon on the Plain. Not just liberation from the Roman Empire, but from cycles of violence and hate and from dehumanization. And so Jesus calls us to resist, to be the resistance fighter, to seek not just human justice, but divine justice, God's mercy. We cannot do that without listening. To listen and to hear and to seek understanding of our neighbors and especially those our cycles of violence have silenced. If you've never heard the song Strange Fruit, it is a difficult one to listen to. 
but it is so important to hear as we seek to proclaim the gospel in a broken world. We need to seek the voice of lament, the cries of injustice, to listen and to understand from within and outside of what we might call our communities, from those we know and those that we don't, all the way to listening to our own heads and our own hearts, telling us that we are not good enough. God is calling us to be the resistance, to join in with those who have already answered that call. And so let us be joined together as we proclaim the good news of God's grace and love, both through word and especially through action. Amen. Together, friends, those in person, even those online. Let us stand together. For those in person, let us hum. Those online, let us sing glory to God. Or, sorry, uh, O Christ the Healer, the words are on your screens. Let us sing. for food and remember the hungry. We thank you for health and remember the sick. We thank you for friends and remember the friendless. We thank you for freedom and remember the enslaved. May these remembrances stir us to service that your gifts to us may be used for others. We lift our leaders, the President, Congress, government, state legislature, mayor and city council and we pray that they would rule with wisdom and integrity help our troops both abroad and here at home be strong and courageous courageous in the tasks that they have before them today let them feel your comforting presence so that they can carry out their work with strength and courage and fight fear of discouragement God, thank you that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray for John and Becky and our congregation, for Virginia Martinez and family grieving the death of her son, Joe, for Linda Black grieving the death of a friend, Lori, who died in a car accident, for the family of Tommy Haskin, who died suddenly this past week in Scottsdale. Tommy is Pat Haskin's son. Dear Lord, we know that you are a God who heals all manner of sickness and illness through the power of your Holy Spirit. Send comfort and strength during this, this time of difficulty to those with health concerns. Malady and pain and looking possible looking for possible more surgery. Steve Vines and Jerry caring for him. Betty Newsom healing after surgery. 
Jack Sharp is in pain. Donna Bean Sturfer's father recovering from surgery and her mother preparing for surgery. Frances, after a fall, she's recovering at home with four broken ribs. Ann Crail, who will have glaucoma surgery on Tuesday of this week. Carol Dean has a broken kneecap and she's recovering from surgery at White Acres. For Bill Spay, who is in hospice. For Bill Bennett, awaiting tests and doctors for a heart valve replacement. Ruth's brother, Bob Pollock, fell and cracked ribs. He is in the hospital with lots of pains. For, for Maureen's niece in the hospital with complications from pregnancy. For Ken Gorski, who has been hospitalized. For Susan Godwin. We pray for Rebecca Haddad, who is having surgery on Wednesday for her ear and also for Margaret, who will, her mother, who will be traveling to her out there for her safe travels. We pray for those with cancer. Callie's daughter, Sarah, who's back at work. For Tiffany at home with chemo and radiation, not doing well, and for her family. Michael Schmidt, Carol, Betty Newsom's daughter. Sarah John. Deborah's sister Linda, who is going through daily radiation treatment, and the, those with COVID. Shelly's sister-in-law, who is who is uh, had COVID and she's going through a long recovery. Abdulia's sister Irene, Abdulia's brother-in-law Angel Galados. Please give doctors, nurses, aides, caregivers, and all health workers in our community peace during the unknown. We pray that as they wake every morning, you wash over them with a peace that surpasses understanding and that peace would go with them throughout the day. We also pray for Austin Elegi, Simba Naya, Sandrine Defue, Martins Itua, Rose Ball, Sandra Mantella, Anna's neighbor, Robert Talabob, who is in the Congo. In the strong and loving name of Jesus, please join us now as Tim leads us in the Lord's Prayer. We'll be praying the Lord's Prayer in Spanish. The words will be found on your screen. Let us pray. Padre nuestro, que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad así en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestra pan de cada día y perdónanos nuestras deudas. Así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. No nos dejas caer en tentación, mas libranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Friends, each Sunday we get to sing together. Each Sunday we get to pray together. And in that prayer, in those songs, we bring the joy, the grief, and all the places that we have been throughout the week. Friends, this is the same that we do in our tithes and our offerings. This is not just a, a, a tax write-off for those who want to do that. It is the words like the lyrics of any of our songs. It is like the words of the prayer that we just said together. Each dollar, each cent, every hour, this is all part of our worship. And so, friends, you can give your offerings and tithes. Uh, for those in person, you can use our baskets that are spread throughout the sanctuary. For those online, you can go to upcelp.org slash give. Or for anyone, you can, go, uh, you can send your checks into our office at 244 North Wrestler. However, we give 
Let us continue to put our spirits, our joy, and our grief in all of who we are and all that we do. Now, friends, let us sing together the doxology, which is found up on the screen. Praise your almighty name. You have blessed our nation with immense wealth and opportunity, Lord. You have commanded us to honor you with our wealth, and we pray that you will be honored this day as we give to you what is already yours. Bless these cheerful givers and bless the tithes and offering that they give. We love you. Amen. We will now sing, we will sing, right? Be thou my vision. Thank you for coming this day, whether you've come in person, whether you've joined us on uh, YouTube or on Zoom, we are glad that you are here. I want to uh, let you know, um, Lent is coming. Holy moly! <laughs> Wasn't Christmas just last week? Something like that. But it is coming. Uh, Ash Wednesday will not be this Wednesday, but the one after that. Together here um, or online at 7 p.m. for that Ash Wednesday service. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please uh, come ask me. So, friends, hear now your benediction. Get out. <laughs> You've heard me say that so many times, but truly, get out and listen. Hear the voice of those who lament. Hear the voices of those that we have said, oh, this is good, we'll just take away this from you. <laughs> Hear the voice of the one who grieves, because in that voice is the voice of God leading us 
to proclaim the coming kingdom, to proclaim liberation. Let us listen and understand. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of the Lord shine upon you, and give you courage. May the Lord light our paths, our journeys together, and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Please join us for fellowship outside and online.